I'm Hieronymus Hogsap, recently awoken from a gin-induced slumber so severe it was misdiagnosed as death. This is my tamed woodcarver, Dust Monkey, and we're here for another round of How to Chainsaw Woodcarve. Spooky edition! <laughs> Come on! Yeah! That's nice! You want to be a cover? That's okay! When your lack of talent is getting in the way Maybe it's just that you don't understand Or maybe that you're scared of cutting off your hand Well don't be put off if you're too crap it's time to sit down and watch You run up his heart sound Come on Yeah You run up his heart sound That's right, woodcarving enthusiasts. On this extra special edition of How to Chainsaw Woodcarve, we're going to be teaching you all about how to make a spooky skull. Whether you want to spice up your Halloween parties or impress that girl from work who calls herself Raven and wears black lipstick all the time, we've got you covered right here. So, let's get started. Dust Monkey, where is your chainsaw? That's not a chainsaw, Dust Monkey. That is a spade. I know what you've done. You've left it in the haunted woods again, haven't you? Well, you best run off and fetch it quick, or the whole show will be ruined. Oh, that careless dust monkey, leaving his chainsaw in the haunted woods. And on this night of all nights, under a full moon, on the anniversary of the summer camp slaughter on five miles away, plus I've heard rumors of a werewolf on the ground. And the ghost from Chucky that possesses the doll as well. I should probably go and warn him. But I'm sure he'll be fine. you? And what's this? Dust monkey blood. And still fresh. I can only assume you've murdered him and stolen his chainsaw. And now you're using it without the proper PPE. You know, I have half a mind as an admiral to report you to the Royal Navy Chainsaw Division and have you arrested. Luckily for you, you've just murdered my tame chainsaw carver, so you're needed for this demonstration. Let's get started. How to make a spooky skull. Before I start, we must address the elephant in the room. There are those who say it is in bad taste for me to make a skull whilst I'm under investigation for the murder of my business partner, Cliff Tuppence. But to those doubters, I say the case was thrown out on a technicality, and that is the end of it. If we imagine that this red line represents the surface of the log we are carving, then we can see it is the top half of the nose and the teeth which protrude the most. The first cuts we will make then will become the top of the nose. Here we can really see Jason's nimble hands quickly change from the task of chopping up promiscuous teenagers to chopping up wood, a career path well known for many carvers. Next we want to mark the bottom of the nose, or as it was known by that greedy so-and-so Cliff Tuppence, the cocaine hole by scooping out a small section. You may want to start rounding off the head to stop it from looking blocky further down the line. Next up, we want to start loosely marking out the eye holes and finish marking out the nose by connecting the two cuts we'd made previously. 
We also want to cut a V-shape on the inside of the nose to represent the nasal cavity. Now we've started to map out the skull's features, we want to separate the top of the skull from the jaw. The top half is much more bulbous than the jaw, so we want to separate the two with height and bring out the cheekbones. We will be returning to this as we go, so remember the old hairdressing adage, you can't put the wood back on. So we're now going to take some more from the skull's jaw and start to fashion a good strong chin. A phrase that I'm sure Cher's plastic surgeon has said to her many times. Now we want to work a little into the eye and brow area, opening up the eyes and using the saw like a file to mark out the eyebrows in a goggle type effect. But wait! As Cliff Tuppence knows, catastrophe can strike at any time whilst wood carving, so you must always be prepared. As we can see in this part of the video, a section of wood splinters off from Jason's carving. But these things will happen, and it's important to learn to roll with these punches. A lesson I hear Cliff Tuppence never learned. The next thing to do is better define the skull's chin and jaw, cutting away more from our previous guide cuts. Our goal here is to slim down the jaw and mark out a jawline on the side of the skull. Here is Jason slimming down the skull. Here is Jason marking out the jawline. We're going to use the saw like a file to make a dip where the bottom teeth would be. We do this in a similar way to the way we marked out the bottom of the nose earlier. Yes, hello, who is it? Ah, hello detective, and what can I do for you? But that could be anyone's DNA. And I already told you, I was at the lake on a camping trip that weekend with Jason. What? Yes, that's right, the murderer Jason. Well, I don't see what that has to do with anything. Anyway, I'm trying to make a YouTube video, so I must bid you a good day. It's jaw time again. We want to get the jaw down to its final size, so keep taking off a little at a time until you're happy with how it looks. Next up, we want to do the same move we've used for the bottom of the teeth on the top of the teeth, creating the raised section we saw on the initial skull picture. All that is left for the mouth now is to put the teeth in themselves, carve into the raised area we left earlier. Just make sure you create a gap between the last tooth and the back of the jaw. Let's round this sucker off, shall we? Unless you want your skull walking around with a log head. That'd be crazy. Make sure you leave the eyes and the eyebrows alone. We're nearly there now. We just need to tighten up what we've done and smooth up some of the lumps. Cross the T's, dot the I's, etc. We also want to add two small dips behind each eye on the side of the skull's head. So that's the basics done. You can leave your skull on a stand or you can separate it off. Jason chose to separate his skull from the stand. I'd show you the footage, but he didn't use his chainsaw. He macheted it off when all I did was ask him how his mum was. How rude. As I've always said on these videos, you must lean into your own style of doing things. Now that you have your roughly finished skull, you can do what you want with it. Sand it up, paint it up, mount it on a stand. But Jason likes the rough and ready look for his Halloween decorations, so he isn't going to sand it up like some Freddy fan, oh no. He's gonna light this sucker up with a blowtorch and burn the whole thing. Lightly. Next, he's going to use a wire brush connected to a drill to grind off some of the burnt areas and reveal the wood color and grain in a spooky way. Take extra care to hit the raised areas with the brush and to avoid the recesses. 
So there we have it, the finished skull. As you can see, the burning has really helped with the spooky effect. Why not experiment with it on some of your other carvings? So that's how to make a spooky spooky Halloween skull. I'm sorry that we lost the life of Dust Monkey, my tamed woodcarver. But I think that Jason has done very well considering he's a drowned lake monster. Speaking of slimy creatures from the depths, if you the viewers have any ideas for carvings you'd like to see done on future editions of this program, leave them as a comment below and I'll try to get through the workable ones as soon as I can. Make a minion! No, I'm not gonna make a minion! That's a ridiculous idea! Why would you eat- Hey, it's me, Raven, from work! That's a really cool skull! Did you make that skull? Yeah, yeah. Awesome! Should we go and hang out in the graveyard? Join us next week on another edition of How Not To Get The Girl. You know it was hot, sir.